well. Thursday and I'm feeling burned out and I know it's temporary but this week like I mean every morning I wake up and I think I don't want to work out like every morning <laughs> but like this week I've seriously considered not working out and the only thing I can think of is I'm just, I'm getting burnt out. I don't have to be to work until nine o'clock in the morning. It takes me a half an hour to get there. I wake up every morning at five. Well, my alarm goes off at five. I wake up at 5.30 so that I can get in my hour workout 
I have to have 15 minutes to cool down otherwise, um, before my shower. Otherwise there's no point in showering cause I'm just going to be sweating all day. And you know, just get my together. And it's just a lot because then I get home. I don't get home until like 530. And then I'm in bed by like 738. So I have what, two hours max with, you know, and I'm just trying to relax and decompress from the day. So I'm just hitting that, that point where it's like, what am I doing all this for? Which is not true. That's like, I mean, that's a thought that I'm having. That is a true thought that I'm having. But I know the answer to that is for me. It's the truth is whether or not I woke up at 530 in the morning anyway, I would still probably be going to bed at 730 or eight o'clock at night because I'm just that's just me. I don't know. I'm just, I'm looking for excuses to stop working out. And it's stupid because I know that it makes me feel so much better mentally and physically. So why would I, why am I, why am I, why am I looking for excuses? Why am I looking to stop it? Points to ponder. I have to be to work in a couple minutes. So I don't know if I have time to ponder it right now this week has been, it's been rough. I mean, I have been working out. I can't say I've been giving it my all. And I want, I have to, okay. So I'm wondering then, cause sometimes <laughs> my, my brain is a messed up place y'all. But sometimes like when I give myself a goal to work for, like say the two 10 K's, Sometimes I try to sabotage myself. I don't know why. But yeah, sometimes like I, like I do the things like half marathons, 10Ks, things like that to give myself a goal to work for, which in theory would make me work harder, right? But sometimes I'm realizing that I it has the opposite effect not all the time and not for the whole time. But yeah, I remember doing that for a couple of the half marathons now. My brain is like so messed up. It wants to prove myself wrong. Like it wants to prove to me that I can't do it. Oh God, my brain is a messed up place. It, it really is. I do not know why I do the things that I do, but I do. Point is, I'm still going. I have pushed myself every morning to get up and do the exercise anyway. I may not be giving it 100%, but I'm probably giving it a solid 85. <laughs> I mean, at least I'm doing it, right? All right, those are Thursday thoughts. I'm going to go to work now. You guys are my therapy session now, and and I'm okay with that, because <laughs> I've been feeling a lot better since Thursday, and not as burned out. Honestly, just talking these things through, I mean, there is something to therapy. There, there's a reason that you just go and you talk to somebody, and you feel better. I mean, I know it's not as straightforward as that, obviously. Uh, I've had much, much, much therapy in my youth figured out the whole self-sabotage thing. And I have been much more gung-ho Friday and today I got up and no, nothing it worked out. I mean, I had my usual, I don't really want to, but not like the, oh my God, I can't face exercising one more day, which is where I was on Thursday and earlier this week. So, yay. Okay, so I saved my Starbucks cup from the last time I went to Starbucks and I made my own oat milk brown sugar shaken thingy. And I mean, it's not espresso because I don't have espresso, but I just made it with regular 
strong coffee. It's so yummy. I made my own syrup. I found a recipe online. So yeah, feeling better. All that jazz. Thanks guys for listening. <laughs> you don't even, you haven't even seen it yet and you've already made me feel better. Yay. So let's just go ahead and get to the weigh-in since we've already had Thursday thoughts and whatever the hell Monday was. Last week, I weighed in at 211.4. This morning, I weighed in at 209.6. So that was a loss of 1.8 pounds. So the water weight definitely went away. Super happy about that. That actually most of it went away the very next day, which we all know it would, it's water weight. But damn, if that's not frustrating almost two pounds. And more importantly, I'm out of the two tens. So I am less than 10 pounds away from Wonderland, guys. I never thought that that would happen. And it, I mean, I'm not counting my chickens before they're hatched, but we're close. We're cl I never thought I'd get this close this time. I mean, I've, I haven't in decades. I haven't been under 200 pounds since... In at least 30 years, and um, that was during a, a healthy dose of bulimia. So, I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen under 200 since I was in my 20s, my early, early 20s. <laughs> I'm excited, and I'm very happy for... A, a significant for me loss this week because it's encouragement and what with the self-sabotage wanting to happen lately this is what I think I really I needed to sort of get me over the hump right now and keep me motivated and going new goal under 200 completely doable in the next couple of months knock wood hopefully I can be be in Wonderland soon. Almost two pounds this week. I am now at 65.6 pounds down. So I am definitely on the other side of, I'm going towards 100 pounds. I never thought I'd get this far, you guys. I haven't. Like, honestly, the last time I had a significant weight loss, was when we lived in Arizona and we did low carb back before keto was cool and I lost about 80 pounds but I was coming from like super high I was coming from like 350 pounds any kind of diet that isn't a calorie deficit for me is is dangerous because once I go off the diet or cheat on the diet it it's a slippery slope and that's what happened that last time I I remember exactly when it happened. I had I had lost like the 80 pounds and had been on the diet for like two years. I was really happy with it, but I was starting to struggle. I was already floundering with, you know, it was back when all the low carb, like they had low carb Doritos or lower carb Doritos and lower carb Cheetos and all of those snacky type foods and the Atkins had just come up with the indulge bars and the sugar alcohols were, were just becoming a thing. And they had started to stagnate my progress, but I couldn't stop. Like I had been so good for so long that I, I couldn't stop snacking, but I was okay with maintaining. Like I, I was like, okay, I can, I can deal with this for a while. And then I, <laughs> we, my favorite band since I was 15 years old was they had reformed and they were playing the States for the first time in for forever. I'd never seen them live. We flew out to, we were in Arizona. We flew out to California. We saw two shows that weekend. We saw one in Anaheim and one in San Diego. And it was perfect. It was perfect. I touched the lead singer's hand. I made a new friend at one of the concerts that I'm still friends with. It was just, it was magical. It was everything I wanted it to be. And because I wanted it to be so special, I decided that I was going to really break my diet for the first time. And we got pizza and breadsticks. 
we got in and out burger on the way home um and i'm talking buns and fries baby and it was it was so great and it was perfect and i was so happy with that weekend it's still one of the greatest weekends of my life and then we got home and i could not could not stop eating carbs like i just could i couldn't i i i couldn't and i gained all my weight well not all my weight back but a considerable amount of my weight back and it, that was just like anything that i restrict completely like a food group or just you know when i restrict that hard it's not good for me because I'll eventually go off and I will just eat copious amounts of whatever I had been restricting myself with. And that, that's just the way my brain works. It, I, I can't, I just can't. So that's why calorie deficit works for me because I can have anything that I want within reason, even if I just have this much of it. And I'm, and I don't feel like I've deprived myself so I can have my maintenance calorie weekends and I can have a cheat meal and still be okay because I'm not I'm not like getting obsessed about it like oh my god I haven't had this food in forever and I need to eat all of it anyway so thank you for tuning in if you have enjoyed any part of this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up I would appreciate it and if you haven't already subscribed and you want to feel free Go ahead, hit that button. Ain't nobody stopping you. Go for it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.